the ocean is known as a vast expanse with its abundant resources ranging from fish to crude oil. However, it is also known as a place full of mysteries, even earning the nickname Ship Graveyard. This is due to the high waves and frequent storms in the ocean which pose a threat to the vessels that navigate it. Over the centuries, many ships, especially cruise ships, have sunk in the middle of the ocean. Many of these cruise ships couldn't be salvaged and were left submerged for years. So what actually happens to the body of a cruise ship when it sinks to the ocean floor? As mentioned earlier, numerous cruise ships have sunk to the ocean floor. One such ship was the SS Andrea Doria, an Italian-built cruise ship that collided with the MV Astoria while en route to New York City on July 25, 1956. The collision took place off of the coast of Nantucket, Massachusetts, United States. As a result of the collision with the MV Astoria, the SS Andrea Doria suffered damage to its right side. The ship began to tilt to the right and started taking on water. Despite successfully rescuing 1,660 people, the ship could not be saved and it eventually sank to a depth of 50 meters. The wreckage of the ship was only discovered a week after it sank. The depth, water temperature, and currents made it inaccessible for recreational divers. Therefore, professional technical divers were required to dive to the ship to avoid decompression issues. Sadly, at least 14 divers lost their lives while exploring the wreck, primarily due to decompression sickness. Furthermore, the sinking of the SS Andrea Doria for more than 60 years has had adverse effects. The ship's hull suffered severe damage with its side plates cracking and collapsing. The upper deck slowly detached from the wreck and settled on the ocean floor below. Divers refer to the SS Andrea Doria as a noisy ship because it constantly made various sounds due to continuous damage from the ocean currents moving metal fragments inside the ship. Due to this extensive damage, many artifacts from the ship have become increasingly difficult to locate. Nevertheless, the shipwreck remains a prime destination for professional divers. 30 years after the sinking of the SS Andrea Doria on February 16, 1986, the cruise ship MS Mikhail Lermontov collided with rocks near Port Gore and Marlborough Sounds, New Zealand. The 175-meter-long passenger ship built in East Germany ultimately sank in this incident. Fortunately, the ship's passengers were successfully rescued with the assistance of the crew and local rescue vessels. The sinking of the MS Mikhail Lermontov resulted in only one casualty, a 33-year-old engineer named Pavel Zagladimov whose body was never found and the cause of his death remains unknown. The wreckage of the MS Mikhail Lermontov was not raised to the surface and was left submerged at a depth of 38 meters at the sinking site. This location is quite popular among scuba divers, with dives ranging from 12 meters on the upper part of the wreck to deep penetration dives down to 36 meters. Certain parts of the ship should be avoided by divers, such as the restaurant area, crew mess, and ship's shopping center due to their enclosed nature which reduces visibility for divers. Furthermore, divers wishing to access the windows on the left side near the top of the wreck need to be accompanied by professional guides due to the confined spaces. Three divers have lost their lives while exploring the ship, including one whose remains may still be trapped inside. A similar fate befell the MTS Oceanos, a French-built cruise ship owned by Greece with a length of 153 meters and a maximum speed of 18.5 knots. The ship sank due to encountering a storm with waves reaching a height of 9 meters. This caused the ship's double-walled pipe casing to rupture, allowing the seawater to flood compartments and the ship's engine room leading to flooding. 
The ship tilted severely, causing many ship furnishings to fall and passengers and crew lost their balance. To contact the rescue team, they used the ship's radio to broadcast an emergency call. By the following morning, the rescue team had located the MTS Oceanos floating off the coast of Coffee Bay, Wild Coast, South Africa. All 581 passengers on board were successfully rescued. Shortly after that, the MTS Oceanos eventually sank to a depth ranging from 92 to 97 meters, approximately 5 kilometers off the coast. The ship's wreckage has since suffered destruction due to strong ocean currents. According to a photo taken by a diver in 2002, the ship's bridge section had already collapsed. These powerful currents have made it challenging for divers to explore the MTS Oceanos wreck. In addition to the MTS Oceanos, there was the MTS Sea Diamond, a Finnish-built cruise ship with a length of 142 meters. The ship ran aground on a volcanic reef east of Neakameni inside the caldera of Santorini Island in Greece on April 5, 2007. The ship's sinking was caused by running aground, allowing seawater to enter the ship to tilt up to 12 degrees to the right before its watertight doors were reported to be closed. This incident resulted in two fatalities, but 1,153 passengers were declared safe and successfully evacuated. The inflow of seawater gradually caused the ship to sink, and on April 6, 2007, the entire ship sank. To prevent oil spills and environmental contamination, some of the ship's fuel was pumped out of the wreck in June 2009. In May 2011, there were requests from the residents of Santorini to have the MSC Diamond Wreck removed and relocated. However, the Greek government claimed that moving the MSC Diamond would cost up to 150 million euros. The Greek Ministry of Shipping and Island Policy had initially announced that the ship's wreckage would be raised to avoid environmental and navigation issues. However, the ship was ultimately left to become an artificial reef to this day. And lastly, the cruise ship MV Costa Concordia, which ran aground near Isola del Giglio on the western coast of Italy on January 13, 2012. The accident led to the evacuation of 4,229 people. At least 25 people lost their lives, 42 were injured, and 7 were reported missing in this incident. After being submerged for more than a year, the remains of the Costa Concordia were partially refloated in September 2013. However, some parts remained submerged and supported by six steel pillars. In July 2014, the process of lifting the MV Costa Concordia was carried out again by pumping air into tanks attached to the ship. The ship was then moved to the port of Genoa, Italy. The operation to remove the Costa Concordia wreckage cost over $1 billion and took almost three years employing a team of 350 rescuers. In the process of salvaging shipwrecks at sea, workers not only focus on moving the ship's body, but also take measurements to prevent damage to the marine ecosystem. Therefore, there are several common methods for salvaging shipwrecks employed by shipping companies and rescue teams. Firstly, workers will initially remove the oil fuel by drilling the ship's outer parts made of double-walled steel into the fuel bunkers at the bottom of the ship. This is a complex task that requires specialized divers to access the ship's interior and retrieve the remaining fuel. Afterward, the second step involves cutting the shipwreck by sawing the accommodation block to clean the deck and simplify the process. Initially, explosive materials were used for this process, but they have been discontinued due to concerns about causing fragility and harming the marine ecosystem. Instead, shipping companies now use specialized saws for cutting the ship. This task carries a high risk of accidents and can take up to 12 hours to cut a single cross-section. 
Once the ship's body had been cut, the third step involves workers slicing the ship back into eight sections. Starting with the bow, holes are drilled to attach cables, which are then lifted by cranes. Each section of the shipwreck is carefully loaded onto barges. However, not all ships follow the same process. For example, the Costa Concordia had to be fully refloated using kaizons before it could be pulled out. The process of removing the wreckage of the Express Pearl, for example, which sank off the coast of Sri Lanka, required dredging from the ocean floor due to its cargo of nitric acid and hazardous materials which had contaminated Sri Lanka's shores. The retrieval from the ocean floor required dozens of cables. Consequently, the sinking of the Express Pearl is considered one of the most costly shipwreck accidents in the world. The final stage of removing a shipwreck involves breaking it down once it arrives at the port. The ship's wreckage is disassembled, starting with the abesto sheets, cables, and other equipment and furnishings, leaving only the steel. Subsequently, this steel is then melted down and recycled. The dismantling process can take several months. Regarding the rehabilitation of the marine ecosystem, shipping companies, port authorities, and rescue teams routinely return to the wreck site to monitor whether there are any remaining pollutants or damage to coral reefs. If damaged coral reefs are found, they begin planting new coral in the affected areas. So as you can see, the process of removing a shipwreck is not a quick endeavor. It takes months, if not years, to ensure that the ship's wreckage is moved following proper procedures, all while minimizing damage to the marine ecosystem.